Lainey Brown, can I screen share HD's Oread yes. and you can lead us in a conversation sure. about that? Okay, great. Why don't I read it and then great. you can ask a few people some questions, all right? Okay. All right, here we go. HD's Oread. Whirl up, see. Whirl your pointed pines. Splash your great pines on our rocks. Hurl your green over us. Cover us with your pools of fur. Wow. Thank it's you. Quite a poem. Okay. I would like to ask Ali, Jason, Kinar, and Kate. Um, and just starting with the question, and maybe we'll have different questions. I'll throw out a few questions, and you can respond to any one of them or something else that is striking you about the poem. So the first question is just kind of, how do we orient ourselves in the poem? Who's speaking? What is in Noriad? Who is the you and the our and the us? Um, the second question, what is being asked? What is the speaker asking? And then getting a little more complicated, what is the sea in this poem? Or what is a tree? in this poem in <laughs> what is made of what in this poem mm. um what a brilliant question <laughs> what is remarkable what is remarkable to you about the poem what is you know mm. it, to me it's a striking miniature unforgettable right um so why don't we start with ali and jump in anywhere you'd like okay uh this is maybe starting backwards but um when i'm looking at this poem i'm imagining it almost in like a kind of movie inception way where like the sea actually is it's like what if we conceived a forest as an ocean or as a sea um and what does that mean about just like the trees and like dimensions of the trees and pines in the air kind of against the rocks crashing onto the rock. So I see it as a kind of like dimension bending, like let's try to change our image of like, our conception of like what an ocean is and what a forest is. Wow, fantastic. I like that phrase dimension bending. Um, and before we go on, there's I'm gonna throw one other question into the mix, which is, is does gender matter in this poem okay so next jason hey um i just looked up oread and it is it means a group of mountain nymphs and specifically mountain which is not what we picture at the edge of the sea, unless we're picturing big sea cliffs. But I think that gender matters here. I'm kind of fixed, fixated on two words in the poem. One is our, on our rocks, and then pools of fur, F-I-R. And to me, this is, a very erotic sexual poem. And I think that I, I really also liked what Ali said about dimension bending. And it's, it's a leap. There's not a direct reference to sex here, but I think in a way it's kind of un avoidable because there's an hour and an us being hurled and whirled and then covered with pools of fur. And I don't think HD is beyond plays on words. Um, earlier today, I was thinking about um, sea rose and thinking about how sea is also to look. Um, but also, I mean, I read fur 
shifts after pines pines as as body body hair pubic hair or hair at all and just a kind of whirling of of limbs f u r f i r gertrude stein loved that pun didn't she yeah yeah <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely there i mean the ocean and tree power and the waves crashing and the call to the oread calling to be covered right it's also an up down up down up down up down uh, motion poem right whirl mm -hmm. up see whirl splash hurl cover us it's just there's the sea and the land are copulating and it seems pretty ecstatic right yeah. <laughs> um thank you so much jason kinar what would you like where would you like to go in this poem yeah um so the the first image that really grabs me here is just these these pointed pines and and even just thinking about the shape of shape of um at least certain pines and deciduous trees where you do have almost this arrow like thing um but they're getting whirled and so there's something really confounding there and something very kind of mobile and active um uh but yeah i, I find the just kind of a uh, sense of motion in the poem to be really incredible um there's both sort of i feel like there's sort of a centripetal and centrifugal thing going on wherein things are kind of being pulled and twirled and whirled toward a center but also like kind of flung toward these outer limits um and meanwhile you have sort of the sea and the mountain together which which is also confounding um thinking about like something like sea level right um and and then at the same time needing to think of the mountainous together um so so i i, I suppose i just like the coincident presence of those different things um and and it leads me to wonder like okay what's the deal with the nymphs what kind of um you know inhabitants is being um solicited or invited here uh yeah what is being invited here i kind of want to linger there is there is there more that you want to say about that the invitation or the invocation yeah it, it's i mean it's a great great question um we actually don't get the, the term like needle in here but i but i'm thinking of kind of the needling of um you know uh pines and you know fir trees and stuff like that um th there's something prickly um well we have pointed the we have the word pointed oh, we have the word pointed there, so that suggests what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, pointed absolutely. Yeah. So so I guess that that's sort of a need, needling element. Um but um yeah. And I'm thinking too about just like how those kinds of trees tree kind of materials tend to um uh kind of cause cause water what's the term? I'm I'm losing the word, but but to cause water to kind of flipping off of them, right? And there's sort of a um a resistance there to to that combination even of those like kind of pine needles and um something like the sea so that's a, a sort of a, an interesting image great thank you so much i'm i'm hearing in your words like a kind of a gravity or a magnetism or you know overpowering natural forces are colliding in motion Great. Um, thank you. Kate, what would you like to add? Um, I I read this poem two different ways. I would say on first read, I, I first read it as an ecstatic conflation of land and sea or forest and sea. But on second read, I began to look at the verbs um, and it made me think about how not just verbs, but whirl and splash and pools are words we only apply to see. We reserve them for that element um, and that, you know, kind of natural body. And it made me wonder what if language wasn't so classified, if we had more freedom to apply these 
different kinds of words to different sorts of scenarios or elements of the natural world, which then made me think, as I always do, like of the degree to which the language is creating the world for us. So if we reserve these words, whirl and splash and pools and the other words that we apply to the ocean for the ocean, how are they in turn inventing the ocean and our understanding of it for us? That's great. Um, mm -hmm. Lainey, a quick final question about this for you. Mm -hmm. We put this in Modpo Plus, but it could be in the main syllabus. And yet it is an imagist in the sense that, as you pointed out, it's everything is confused. Mm -hmm. It's actually fabulously imprecise. We don't even know where we are. It doesn't sound like imagism to me. What the heck? <laughs> Any thoughts about that? Um, yeah, and this actually has, has came up in a discussion in office hours, um, how the categories are useful, and it's also useful for them to dissolve That's with, right. with any movement that we're talking about. Right. Um, it's useful in hindsight, but then if we look at the individual poets and the individual poems, we see right. that there's there's not there there's not an exact resemblance. Oh, exact resemblance. Exact resemblance. Between, More Stein. Yeah, between the, the the manifesto, the theory, and the poem, they're they're not. Mm. It it's not a formula. Well, Definitely it might be not. a formula, but they're not the same. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Lainey.